think uh, you know an interesting topic is is this I, like the eschatology and baptism team, seem to be the two conversations that get Christians the most heated. Oh, when, I can tell you there are more. And there are more too, <laughs> yeah. but those seem to be the ones that I think that a lot of people have thoughts about. So, but in in for any of them, how should and how do Christians uh, work towards uh, unity with these rich theological differences that, that they might they okay. may have? How do how do we do first that? of all? I don't think there are rich theological differences. Okay, I think there are a bunch of cheap shots. Hmm. Um, they are things that people want to somehow prove they are smarter than you, more mm. spiritual than you, and above all, I want to draw something on you that's going to say, well, I don't have to deal with you. Yeah, yeah. And so most of that kind of theology or presentation of their theology is a way... Uh, I, I had a guy come up to me one time, and he was quite active in the church. Uh, people loved him, he was well known in the community, he says, John, I don't want us to use the Lord's Prayer anymore. Hmm. I said, well, that's kind of unique. What, what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah. I do not believe that part, forgive us as we forgive. Hmm. Hmm. I said, well, I'm sorry, but I think that the author of that is <laughs> pretty precise. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a problem with that, then you know what you need to do. Yeah. But we're going to have the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. He left. Hmm. And people ask me, many people ask me, what happened to so-and-so? Well, yeah. decided to go someplace else. Yeah. You can't, you know, that's one of the fun things of being a pastor. You know things you cannot even begin right. with an eyebrow to yeah. communicate. Yeah. So do you, th I mean, how, how, how can we broker, I mean, like obviously there are those that are just going to be uh, either, you know, kind of intellectual snobs or just not very kind, but for those of us that want to have real theological discussion with people that disagree with us, how do we do that well? Okay, I think instantly, I mean, you and yeah. I can have real theological conversations. Yeah. I can have great theologian, I mean, I, I'm talking to someone who is in science yeah. right now, right? and uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, I think he might be Jewish in background, I'm mm. not even sure at this yeah. point, but let me tell you, we are having a ball Hmm. absolutely an amazing thing because we both respect each other okay, yeah. and give each other the space to say, I'm working on this. Yeah. Um, where I have the problem is, and, and I became more and more arrogant as I got older, I guess you do that. Uh, I had a guy in a, my last church come up to me because we put a screen up in front of the church hmm. and we had a guitar the same Sunday. Oh, yeah. You know, if you keep having that stuff up there and that kind of music, I'm gone. I said, well, we'll miss you. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't leave. And a few weeks later, he came to me and, you know, I've got a real problem I need to talk to you about. Mm. He said, I've got a grandchild that's homosexual. Hmm. Tough world for some of us old folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wait, and 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 sometimes you, you, those things can uh, that those frustrations that might be in the back of somebody's head can come through in in ways that they don't necessarily mean, but they're just trying to find a way to put this energy that they're feeling. So it's towards the guitar, and then yeah, he still may exactly. he may still not like the guitar. Oh yeah, right. But he really wasn't caring about that as much. No. It was he was hurting. He's broken. Right. Yeah, I think, I, and the respect thing is so powerful. I think the amount of conversations that I see between Christians where there's no respect, there's no kindness and no love. No kindness. Uh, that is unchristian. Yeah, and 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 so, like, I, I, I can joke around with uh, uh, my friend uh, about baptism. because yeah, and like sure. and, and, and I'll, like, nudge him a little bit, or I'll send him a picture that says, like, hey, see, this is how it's supposed to be done. Um <laughs> And he'll come back at me, and we'll and we'll have a good time, and then we can have a real discussion about it. Yes, but it's because we love each other. That yes, and we respect each other. Absolutely, yeah. that's that's why the theological questions are always hard for me to deal with. Yeah, 
because uh, yes, I'm a theologian because right. I say things theologically. Yeah. But as far as having, you know, the old old way of doing things. Uh, do you do you have a, a systematic theology book? I have a few. Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a product of the 1800s. Yeah. That whole thing, we have to systematize everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it wor- really worked for uh, Presbyterians because we systemized business. Right, right. And, you know, it was that kind of a whole mindset. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus didn't really, he was a lousy systematic theologian. Hmm. Yeah. And when I came to realize that... Um, I saw a theology that was so much higher, hmm. richer, living. Um, and, and again, no, you make sure in your studies, you study systematic yeah. theology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. don't get to, don't get your feet cemented into it. <laughs> into this, well, the system, I think sometimes for some, I mean, you're trying. You end up reading your system into the text. Yes. Yeah. And, and not letting the there because there is tension. Um, and I would say I still do that. I think we all do. Everybody's yeah, got. Right. Everybody has a system that they're yeah, working to. But the yeah. idea you're trying to hopefully the goal is it seems to break away those lenses that you have. Yes. As you come to the text and let yes, the text speak yes. to you first. And if the text is against your system, well, your system's wrong. Yeah. Um, not the text. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe there's a good illustration with the eye surgery I've recently had going from 2600 to, to 2020, and yeah. then I'm seeing colors like I've never seen before. Right. Because all that junk that was in there is gone. It's gone, yeah. Yeah, you see it afresh and a new. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Um, one of the things that's interesting is so there's there's two studies that are, that are unique, but one that, so Barna, the Barna mm-hmm. research group, a study came out recently showing like a really large number of pastors and ministry leaders uh, feel burnt out, um, and they've they've really considered leaving their their fifty their plus role. percent. Yeah. Um, so, what advice would you give to pastors feeling tired, but also want to endure and keep on in ministry, or like what does what does endurance in ministry look like? You know that. Ty, that is really hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeremiah got stuffed in a septic hole. Mm. He was so appreciated by his congregation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet he pro- proclaimed the truth. And I think that... Uh, Hmm. Maybe this maybe this makes some sense. I think that for pastors today, they have to put on the armor of God. Hmm. They have to know every piece of that armor. Yeah. Uh, because the armor of God is not an armor of pain inflicted on others. Mm-hmm. It is protection for the servant of God. Hmm. And um, I think I think what is somewhat happening is that Christianity has become kind of another self help help movement. Yeah. And that's not what it's about. No. Yeah. And I think that some of those fifty percent that are leaving have been led to believe that we are a self help people. Hmm. We are a political movement people. Mm-hmm. We are this. And, and I, I think some of the pastors who have gotten involved in the political stuff have now are becoming disillusioned with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so where do you turn when, you're, when, when you, you've set these kind of idols up and they get pushed over? Yeah. Uh, where do you go? And I, I think that the endurance is to keep your eye focused exclusively on Jesus mm. as the revelation of God who is taken to the cross. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Ty. I can't promise you a good future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
but stay in there. Yep. Not because it's you. Right. But because he is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, it's the, it's, yeah, preach the gospel. I got to preach the gospel to myself continually. Yeah. And, and maybe even it's um, in the same way marriage is, right? Oh, yeah. You keep coming back oh, yeah. to your marriage vows. Oh, yeah. All, all the time. And so for, you know, is it, I keep coming back. Not just, to, I mean, as, as when you're an ordained pastor, you are, you you give ordination vows. So mm-hmm. maybe it's, but but I feel like maybe a stronger uh, love tie is to that uh, call. Like, I mean, when you, yeah. when you remember that moment oh, yeah. where that where that pastor is is pre or preacher is, is saying this about and you're and you're just led. Yeah. It grips you. And so and you go, that's why. Yeah. That's why I'm here. I, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I may be suffering yeah. today, but see and one of the fallacies I think of Christendom is that we have established too much gap between pastors and what we call laity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a study of the word laity is uh, an interesting one. It's only really laos is a yeah. common person. But it's interesting that the laity are actually, um, uh, the, the clergates were to be shepherds, and they, yeah. they, they were to take care of. Uh, yeah. But they weren't to dominate. They weren't... Right. Uh, the, the whole role of pastor today and especially today when you're up front and you have to yeah. perform and yeah um, we are so entertainment hmm. uh, oriented um, I remember our previous pastor here he was dealing with some issues about music in the hmm. church mm-hmm. which I call the the war department of the church yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I said you know I think we I, I know you get fired for doing this, but I think you ought to do away with all music for four weeks. Uh, yeah. Hmm. And ask the question, why are we here? Yeah. Yeah, it's such a big question. Yeah. Why do we come to church? Yeah. Yeah. Is it because we like the style of preaching or we like the style of music? Or or do we have... Have, have we grown, and this, this is what happens in every church. Uh, okay, a, a pastor friend of mine, I uh, met a general assembly, who's taking me through his church, and he says, comes up to this one door, he says, I don't have a key for this. This, this is where the women, uh, the women's association, this is their room. Oh. They won't let me in. <laughs> you know, yeah. And we get territorialized in mm-hmm. the church. Yeah. And we begin to become tro- controllers mm. of people. If they get close to us, we begin to bite and mm. hiss and glower and make people feel very uncomfortable yeah. uh, and wonder why they leave. Mm. We, why can't we get any help anymore? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. Stop chasing them away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's good. I mean, yeah, what... You know, I think that's a, another part of one of the things that I think about all the time. Why? Why do we? Why? Why are yeah, we here? Why are we here? Am Am I here so we can see each other? Right. Well, yes. But but it's deeper than that. Yeah, it's yeah. deeper than that. It's yeah. not what movie did you just see? Yeah. It's how are you doing? Yeah. yeah. And we've got people in this church that are facing the solid brick wall. Yeah. And yeah, man, uh, we've got to be with them. Yeah, well, I mean, it, with that, I mean, you've it, it's it's no secret that you've experienced health issues just in the last years. But you also, I mean, if, you know, er, when your earlier years, when you were younger, you experienced some heart attack. Uh, uh, yeah. So how do you? How did you? Stay firm. Did you? So like so yeah. I guess it's a multifaceted question. How did you stay firm in your faith in God during those times? What was it that you just kept clinging to? And then like in the moments of doubt or frustration or just like like why God am I here type moments? How did you how did you get out of that or or how did you what did that what did that what was that what was that like? Yeah, I you know, I haven't really been to those places. Yeah. Um, I remember laying there in the hospital because I went in with, I thought I had a stomach problem. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
and I'm laying there, and oh, we can we need to do an EKG probably, and they, it was optional. Okay. And they did an EKG, and I'll never forget the doctor looking down at me. He says, um, "You're having a heart attack." Wow. Having. Wow. Right there on the yeah. gurney. And I said, "Am I going to die?" Hmm. And he said, "We're going to do everything we can for you." Hmm. And I began to shake. Yeah. And um, so the next about four weeks, I uh, back, we we had incredible care at that hospital and with the doctors. And I mean, I can't, I won't go into all that stuff. But incredible. But I had an experience where there was a lady across the street. She was an attorney. Her husband was a firefighter, mm -hmm. and just a young couple and very supportive, very sweet couple. And, I remember standing there, and she said, you know, we're so glad to see you coming along and so forth, and, and I was still scared. I mean, really yeah. scared. Yeah. Um, but um, she says, yeah, my, my father-in-law had a heart attack seven years ago, mm. and I'm standing there on the front porch with Pam. And um, when he came home from the hospital, he hasn't left the hospital once. I mm -hmm. hasn't yeah. left the house once oh. since his heart attack. Wow. He was totally consumed by fear. And I stood there remembering, and I remember so clearly, making a decision. I've got to either live with this or die with this. Yeah. And from that moment on, I made decisions with a sense of freedom that scared Pam into the middle of the week. <laughs> I was done with General Assembly. I gave him six weeks, and I was leaving, and God opened up a door to go to Centralia at the last minute. Yeah. Miraculously. Yeah, wow. But I was out of there. Yeah. Wow. So what do you, so, so say, I mean, there are people that we know really well in this church who are struggling with just, I mean, whether it be health issues or the loss of a loved one. Um, but we have, I mean, not just a congregation full, but a, a country full of people who have, who are broken yeah. after these last two years. How did, for those who are just like, kind of throwing their hands up and going, I don't know what to do, what to think. What, how do you, what do you, how would you encourage them, um, in, in this day right now? I think what my mom said to me helped me tremendously. Mm. John, plan as though you're going to live a thousand years, but live like you're going to die tomorrow. Mm. And that was phenomenally important because, number one, I had to recognize that I am not here forever. Mm. Um... I have spent more time around funeral homes that the, than the average person. Yeah, yeah. That has helped me to understand that. But I guess... I guess what we need to do is be more honest before those events hit. Hmm. So that we are prepared. Yeah. And then I remember one phrase, when, and I don't even know where it came from, but the hmm. job of the pastor is to help people enter the next world peaceably. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't want to do that yeah. right away. Yeah. But I'm going to yeah. sometime. Yeah. And you are too. Yep. And it happens, bing, like that in a lot of cases. But as we begin to face... I don't like facing our mortality. I think it's a stupid phrase. <laughs> but facing our existence as God's beings hmm. is so much different. Mortality is, well, the mortality means death. Yeah. Uh, no, um, I don't understand what's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm not overly worried about it. Hmm. Um, you know, I think about it, sure. Yeah. But it's pretty natural. Mom and Dad did it. Right. Grandma and Grandpa did it. Yeah. Great, 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 all of them done right. it. Right. So join the club, hmm. you know, and get ready for it. But live 
as though it's a thousand years. Yeah, that's good. And I hope that I'm, um, and I, I would like to say that to people. Uh, the fear, I, I think a lot of the fear of Christian people is, tell me, Pastor, do you think I'm really going to go to heaven or hell? Yeah. They're scared. Yeah, yeah the assurance. Oh, my goodness yeah. sakes. Um, you know, uh, I do not deserve heaven. Yeah. That's the whole point of the thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jesus Christ took care of that for me and for that horrible sinner. And I don't get it. I don't get this horrible mass shooting. Yeah, yeah. God, what are you going to do with that person? I don't get it. Yeah. It's not in my hands. Yeah. Nevertheless, God is victorious. Yeah. And he isn't willing that any should perish. I think that's a quote out of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the 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 that idea of God God being victorious and that he is good like to his core. We're reading a book called uh, Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. I don't know if you've um, it it made some uh, Crossway. Uh, it was very popular book, popular by Crossway in the last few years. Um, but it's all about the fact that the heart of Jesus, the one time Jesus says anything about his heart in, on earth, is that he is gentle and lowly. Yeah. Um, and that like, like his very being is compassion. Yeah. His very being is goodness. Um, and that goodness wins. Like that's to me the thing that gives me hope all the time. Okay, uh, let me let me say I think now I'll I'll become theological. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a major theological error. Our salvation is not about me going to heaven. Right. Yep. Our salvation is to equip me to be God's person on earth. Mm. Yeah. To be ambassador. To be yes, yeah. that's the word. Yeah. To be ambassadors. Yeah. Um, an ambassador is a member of a kingdom living in a foreign kingdom. Right. For the sake of the king. Yep. Yeah. And we, you know, I love the Psalms, but we don't hear a lot about the kingdom of God no. being preached, and that's what Jesus preached. Well, we're about to on Sunday. Sounds good. <laughs> yes, I'll. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I I think that we need to understand that we are a part of the kingdom of God as ambassadors, living in um, Russia, mm -hmm. because we've got ambassadors living for Jesus in Russia yeah. and in China, yep. and we we're good Christians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's 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 so it's the salvation is not an escape route. No, um, it is it is. Yes, we get to experience eternal life with God, and and it is the story of how we are made right with God. But it is so much fuller than yeah. that very than than that one piece of it. It is it is that His kingdom is here. That God reigns here, and we get to, and, and we get to be part of that kingdom on earth. It's so much greater than no. not that. And salvation is the greatest gift that we're going to receive. But it's not just my sins are forgiven, and I'm going to this yeah, and to this city. It is not a birthing process exclusively. It is right. that yeah. But it it once you have that life, now it is supposed to be a life of growth. Yeah. and that again yeah. back to the th you know third grade knowledge yeah. of the. The scriptures, um, we need to understand that we are in real bad shape as Christians, yeah. as communities of Christians, because what we think we believe as Christians is norm, probably pretty far from what it's really about. Mm. Uh, um, we have we have some really hard work to do. Yeah. 
there's a there is another book that has really profoundly helped me, and that is the stages of growth. Okay. Um, um, and it's a guy from Duke University okay. wrote it, and it, about spiritual growth development and the five levels. There's a, an educational philosophy of of this too. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but what happens is that me, people tend to get into that third stage, and the next stage, the fourth stage, is kind of an individual standalone. Here I am, and it's a very insecure. And what people tend to do is they circle back down into number three and never mm. make it up into the fourth mm. and fifth, fifth stages of intellect. This yeah. happens in science, it happens in mathematics, it happens in art, it happens in piano playing. Yeah. Um, come up to that, okay, I'm kind of comfortable and this is where everybody is, which is sad to say, but that's where they are. Yeah. And the challenge of the Christian is to go into that individual step that says, here I am uh, with Christ yeah. and to move up and then you become the guru up on top. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sitting on yeah. the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the only, eventually we get there when, we, when, when we're with Jesus, and then, event, yeah. and then we get to learn everything. Yeah, yeah. and then I think we're down at <laughs> yeah. level one again. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 because then we just, yeah, just keep growing and, and learning in that. That's yeah, you know, I, I have often said, you know, I think the first thing that's going to happen before I get to go into heaven is I'm going to get stopped at the gate. And Okay, John, there's a few few theological things we got to straighten out here before yeah. we let you in. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm on, fine with that. On December 3rd, 20, <laughs> yeah. 2002, you preached this. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> what? So I guess we'll, we're, we're close to an hour and a half, so maybe we'll... Oh my. we'll, we'll uh, will will end Fun here <laughs> it has been good i mean and this is uh, for those th- you guys are getting a quick insight into how john and i's conversations go yeah. all the time is i don't know about those folks but i yeah, love yeah. being with you I, and, yeah i love being with you too and ty and tyler yeah. and and uh, anybody that wants to really think about stuff and yeah. and you know, if somebody wants to come and examine me theologically, I, I've gone through my theological exams. I passed yeah, them. You did it, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. You know, you don't have to. Ex- yeah. You know. <laughs> we'll just trust that, that 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 process went well. Yeah, yeah, right. And I've learned a heck of a lot since then. And, right. And uh, but if we want to really talk about the substance, oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Well, okay, here we'll, we'll end with this question: Who is your um, maybe pastoral or theological hero. Do you have one? I got umpteen of them. Yeah. Is there, is there one? One that, of yeah. them, uh, this is just a, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But one of them, I just, I'll, I'll just mention, Dr. Everett Harrison. Okay. Uh, professor of New Testament. Okay. Uh, students named him St. Everett. Okay. Um, he loved the scriptures. And seminarians can be really obnoxious. And they always want to, you know, kind of tweak the yeah. prof. And I watched as my colleagues would throw this question out, you know, like... <coughs> yeah. And I love the way, well, that's a good question. I think if we were to look at John chapter 5 and verse 6, we would find how Jesus dealt with a similar kind of a question. Hmm. I watched how he heard would not engage in the... Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm an escapist. I don't like engaging in conflict. Yeah. I mean, that's just who I am. But yeah. I will if I have to. And um, he knew his scripture. He knew his theology. Um, my senior year there, his daughter, who had been a Rose Princess in the Rose Parade... Mm-hmm died after about six or seven years of a degenerative disease. Mm. The whole school (sighs) 
the school shut down to go to the service. Mm -hmm. So the next day is class, and we're not sure whether Dr. Harrison is going to be in class or not. And, uh, but we're all there early. Mm -hmm. And in he comes. And he would always start with these prayers that were straight between him and God. Mm. Awesome prayers. Today, before I pray, I'd like to say a few things. Just one thing. You're training to be pastors, and you're going to try to give comfort to people. Mm -hmm. There will be times when you will need comfort. Do not rob the people of their ability to give you comfort. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know why, but... Dr. Harrison chose me to be his teaching assistant, hmm. letting me grade all of the incoming students' New Testament. Yeah. And none of them killed me. Yeah. But um, that man was Saint Everett. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, those, there, are those, there are those people that just, um, just leave such an impact. Yeah. Yeah. And you want, you almost, you, you, you hope to be that to those who whom you touch and yeah 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 i i think he would probably be one of the ones that um if i were to have to go into somebody else's skin yeah he definitely would be one of them oh that's good well i think that's a good good place to to stop that's a good that's just a good uh yeah there's jo joy in in hearing a, a heart of a man like that oh. um, there's just goodness there so incredible by the way he was that. one of the translators of the NIV oh really yeah okay in the early ones when they actually yeah. listed who all the translators yeah, yeah. are you would find his name there so he was he was he, he was a soft soft man but he it sounds like soft hearted man but he but he knew how to he was he was I think people sometimes think that the, the softer the the man, they're not as theologically sharp because they're not as willing to engage in the battles. Uh, but clearly, I mean, I, I, I've said this before when people ask me about what translation they should read. And I go, to be honest, you're, on, on the majority of the translations, they're all smarter than you. <laughs> so <laughs> they just, they're, they're, they're all, and they're all better than I am when it yeah. comes to Greek and Hebrew. So I, 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 I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust their judgment. Uh, in in a in most in most cases, yeah. so uh, yeah. so in my Psalms class, I'm going yeah. to give a two page, uh, front and back rather, yeah. uh, list of all the possible translations people can go out and buy. Right. Yeah. Now pick the right one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that well? That's such. It's so wild I, to think about that. Uh, <laughs> that we have that many. I mean, you think about people like. The theological giants of the Reformation, you oh, know, yeah. Calvin, Luther, Zwingli, and they, I mean, they were lucky to have a complete set of manuscripts. Oh yeah. Um, and I mean, and, no and, printed Bible, and, right? And then, <laughs> and then the printing press comes along, and and it's translated into English, and you you're lucky in a in a house to have one. Yeah. And now, I mean, I have somewhere in here at least six. Oh yeah. Um, and I can, and yeah, and I, on my computer alone, I can have, I can, I can access thirty translations in a second. And every language on the face of the earth, yeah. almost. Yeah, and it's it, it is uh, <clears throat> it is a true gift, and also wonder in how God has preserved His Word in such a way that we that we, and also, I mean, like, what a what a blessing it is that we happen to live in the time, even though it doesn't seem like it's that great of a time for the church and Christianity in general. But we live in a time where where we get where we get access to the Word of God in such a way. Yeah, uh, it's a you know. So final yeah. Yeah, yeah. silly story. Yeah, <clears throat> about this guy who was going to do his doctorate in in the Hebrew. Yeah, and uh, so he picks out a chapter of the Bible and and the advisor says, "Well, that's what way too much. <laughs> Take it down to a, you know a small." So he comes back in with five verses. Yeah. Well, no, way too much. He says, "Oh, okay." 
I want you to take it down to smaller than this. Keep, keep going, keep going. You've got to refine it and focus. Yeah. So he gets down, he comes in with one verse. No, I want you to really focus. So he comes back with one word. I said, he says, you're still way too big on this, way too big. So he looks at the Hebrew and there's this little mark. Hmm. And he writes his thesis on this mark. Wow. Turned out to be a fly speck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, think man. a lot of our theology is that we focus and we get the fly speck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the, yeah. The Puritans, I mean, we're, we're historic, you know, we're famous for writing whole volumes on four, oh. four words. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know how they did it, but. You know, in some ways we're better off for it. In some ways, oh yeah, know, maybe maybe not so much. But not so much. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, John. Thank I appreciate you it for the opportunity. Yeah, it, I just love talking to you. So God I'm is glad. good. Yes, he is all the time. Yep. Amen. Alrighty. Thank you for listening. Would you like to use this music? 
you can easily license it with just one click and use in any personal or commercial project. Visit TunePocket.com to get started.